in my book. So I am looking forward to seeing what the Knicks do. I don't know if they're going to necessarily, um, I think they, they, they're probably going to get Donovan Mitchell at this point. Well, that guy sure is an idiot, isn't he? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? I was not expecting to be back here so soon. Well, I kind of was, but I kind of wasn't. Because, uh, like I said in the last video, I thought he was going to get traded to the Knicks. So I don't think I would have made a video about it if that were to be the case. Not this soon reacting to it because it wouldn't have been a surprise. But Donovan Mitchell has been traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And a lot of people are very excited about it. I am a... Uh, Somewhat excited about it. I, I do. I am looking forward to watching them on League Pass and things like that. But uh, <laughs> it's a lot of uh, are they contenders now talk going on, and I'm not sure that they at that level yet. Even though the Cavs were very good last year, and and some people got hurt, and, and Allen specifically, and they kind of fell off towards the end of the season. I think it's going to be a little uh, a little adjustment period before they actually start cooking on all cylinders. They still got to figure out the wing situation. Who's going to be the three? Is it going to be Okoro? I'm not sure if. Uh, he gives you enough shooting, even though, he, like, defensively, they might just need him out there because I think uh, Mitchell and, and, and Garland can give you enough in spurts. I'm not saying he should be the, the main guy out there necessarily, but, like, he should he, he should probably be able to just start some games. Just in general, they should probably go to that first and kind of bring Karras off the bench and kind of give him a little more wiggle room to dance because even though Karras is a, a decent player, he needs the ball more often than not to be like successful he's, he's largely a rhythm kind of guy he needs to get into his drives and kind of get things going that way and then the shooting comes along and stuff like that he's not a consistent enough shooter to be uh primarily off the ball kind of guy uh for long stretches at a time if you if you want to get the most use out of him he's probably going to need the ball in his hand so perhaps him coming off a bench roll or perhaps getting moved. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Is it's a it's a well. I'm not going to say it's a long way. The season starts in uh, <laughs> or preseason starts in about a month. But um, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of disappointed uh, as a basketball fan though because I kind of wanted to see what Mitchell would look like in the in an environment that didn't kind of have a ready-made defensive situation and a guy next to him that can kind of take the playmaking burden off of him. I kind of wanted to see how he could grow and develop in those areas as a defender, as a playmaker. But for, as a, from, from a pure basketball perspective, this is probably the best, uh, most like tailor-made situation for him to go to in terms of what he's experienced in the league and what he's gotten accustomed to. He leaves Rudy, uh, a rim protector and rim diving big and gets one in Allen. Um, Mobley to a lesser extent, but Mobley is a more versatile defensive piece that they didn't really have in Utah. So from from that standpoint, I think that um like he'll fit right in with them in that respect. As far as uh his his and Garland fit, uh, a lot of people are making uh assumptions about like the playmaking duties and stuff like that. that Garland's gonna have the ball and stuff like that. I'm I'm more interested to see how they play off of each other in terms of Mitchell setting up things for Garland because I think Garland is a is a good off ball player. He's, he's he was clearly their best like shooter last year, and uh, I, I'm, cl I'm I'm interested to see how he can actually work off ball and not having to do all the work on ball like he did last year because they didn't really have anybody else to like get it going like that. <clears throat> so I'm interested to see because um, I do think Donovan has enough playmaking to to run PG for stretches. He's shown that he's average what five six assists per game uh in his career not in his career but recently and uh he can make most of the reads on the court he's still very small so it kind of limits the consistency with which he makes those reads like skip passes and things like that he kind of has to to jump and like ha put his whole force into those kind of passes and it's not like a natural thing for him and so and depending on what kind of sets they can run have Garland coming off some baseline screens and stuff like that, some pin down type shenanigans, uh, and uh, have him at the top key just making those reads. That's not something that I don't think he won't be able to do. Um, as far as the 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 issue I see with the fit, of course we talk about the defensive issues and stuff like that. That's going to be a given. They're both very small guards, and they even if they gave their all, they're not. Well, Donovan is a little more physically imposing but you can only do so much at at six feet you know and it's generous both of those guys are I think are getting generous listings on their height and um so there's going to be uh limited resistance just 
based off physical stature, you can have all the tools in the world, you can have all the technique in the world, but sometimes you just ain't big enough and that's just going to be what it is. But one of the things I'm interested to see is not necessarily the, the playmaking aspect or the how they fit together offensively during the course of a game, but it's the last five minutes of a game, who's going to be doing what out there. Because for all of uh, Mitchell's successes in this league and stuff like that, he has been a sneakily bad finisher of games over like the course of his career uh I think he was particularly bad last year I don't have the numbers in front of me maybe I looked him up but he hasn't really been uh a guy you can count on consistently in the clutch to like bring games home for you and Garland kind of struggled with that last year as well we saw it in the second play-in game even though he played good in the first play-in game uh, a lot of his a lot of his game is based off of <laughs> uh shots that kind of get a little more difficult once the the defense tightens up and stuff like that he does a lot of things off the dribble with a lot of angle creation and stuff like that how he uses the glass the arc he has on the shot and stuff like that stuff like that that tends to get a little more wayward as the game gets a little tighter so I'm interested to see who's going to take well I'm not going to say who's going to take what but if both of their presence makes it easier for the other in the clutch because as I've said, neither one of them have particularly played well in those situations. Well, Garland, I think he played okay in his second year, but last year he wasn't particularly great. Neither one of them were. Um, so I'm interested to see that. Of course, the, the the continued development of Mobley, particularly offensively, I made a video about it. I think he can uh, add some interesting, interesting wrinkles to their offense if he continues on the trajectory where his shooting is improved, if he, if he gets uh, – a little more fluidity in that motion that I was talking about in the video. He still uh, will prove to be a, um, a good short roll guy, and uh, he should increase his viability as a lob threat over the course of his career because he's going to naturally get stronger. Even if he doesn't get bigger, he's going to get functionally stronger, if nothing else. And he has enough athleticism to where he's going to be able to finish over the top of people if he's not able to finish through them necessarily. And... Uh, <clears throat> I'm interested to see how this is all going to develop. Um, I don't know what the contract situation is with, uh, like, if Mitchell wants an extension, I don't know how that goes into Mobley because if I'm not mistaken, you can only have a certain amount of guys on, like, uh, those rookie con those rookie uh, extension contracts or whatever on your roster, I think, if, like, if, if one of them was traded to you. I don't know how the rules work exactly, but – like it was a problem like with getting Donovan Mitchell to, uh, to Brooklyn because they had Ben Simmons and you can't have more than one of those kind of guys on those contracts if, if one of them is traded or something like that. I don't remember the rules off the top of my head, but um, <laughs> I'm interested to see if that is actually going to be a problem. I don't think it is, but I'm saying that to say I'm not sure about the long-term viability as will Mitchell re-up in Cleveland. We don't know. Um, I mean, that's a question that's a couple years away, but I think this is something to monitor going forward because just like Utah, you know what I'm saying, even though Cleveland is an upstart team, stuff like that, attracting talent to those areas of the country is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world. And if they don't, if they aren't as successful as uh, they might think they are going to be, how is that going to look in a year or two? But overall, I'm excited for it. Uh, good for uh, Colin Sexton. He finally found somewhere to go. <laughs> he finally got a contract. People was asking me on all my lives, like, what's going on with Colin Sexton? I'm like, dude, I don't know what his market is. I don't know who's checking for him. I don't know what's going on. But he finally got a contract, and he got a chance to actually go somewhere and get minutes and just kind of uh, figure out what he is as a player in this league because – He's undeniably like a scorer for sure, and people talk about his tenacity and all this other stuff. Um, but he, he has to kind of grow into being a player that you can like rely on to like run offense and stuff like that. If you if you envision him to be that guy, because he's not that guy right now. He's more of a put the ball in the basket kind of guy, as opposed to oh, I want to run my team through this guy kind of guy. And uh, I think in Utah he'll get a chance to kind of figure those things out. I, I feel a little. Uh, not, not not necessarily bad, but I thought THT was going to have a, a little more opportunity to kind of uh, see what he can do and explore some possibilities. Of course, they're going to be a bad team either way, so maybe both of them can kind of get in where they fit in in that respect. But I do want to see how they develop, uh, I, I guess, alongside each other. <laughs> so um, we'll see uh, if they're able to kind of develop into the kind of players that they need to be in order to be successful in this league. Um <clears throat> Other than that, uh, this 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 is bad for my uh, 
reddish to the Lakers agenda. I thought we was going to get some, uh, <laughs> some, some reddish agenda popping on this channel, but you know, the, the year is still kind of young in terms of what's going to happen. We know, we don't know where people are going to end up. So we could still have some of these things going on. The Lakers still need to do something because that roster as constructed will not be cooking. <laughs> it won't be cooking. So I'm sure they're still trying to make some moves if they do an uh, ancillary trade with Utah, get Conley or something like that, or they still go to the Indiana, uh, Turner, Bog, uh, no, Turner and, and healed well. I don't know. But uh, TLDR, I like to trade for the Cavs. I am interested to see how everything fits together, particularly when the game gets tight and uh, who, who needs to step up and be that guy pile. Or they can alternate. It doesn't really matter, but they got to figure that out if they want to win close games. But maybe the games won't be as close as I think they are because, you know what I'm saying, they got a good enough nucleus to kind of get some wins in the East, even though the East is going to be really tough this year. The West is going to be tough too. I think we're we, we shaping up for some good basketball, some uh, some parity, if you will. <clears throat> and I think we're going to have a lot of uh, interesting races down the stretch, even though we got this, the play in, which, you know what I'm saying, I ain't really rocking with that too too heavy. Uh, past if if a team is in the AC and they more than five games ahead of somebody, just give them the playoff spot. That's how I feel about it. But other than that, I don't got nothing else for y'all. Donovan Mitchell to the to the Cavs, not the Knicks. <laughs> Knicks fans in shambles. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. But you know what I'm saying. Maybe this a little uh little karma for what you, what you did to my guy Julius. I don't know. <laughs> Took y'all out the mud, then y'all treated him like a terrible person. But anyway, I ain't got nothing else for y'all. I'm about to go do what I was doing. I'll see y'all.